Rich Papora. For John Timpanelli and Tim Panelli, ladies and gentlemen, let them hear it. How are you, folks? Welcome, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I was actually running late. I just got back from a really big tour out east. I was in Dade City, and uh, got that joke from them. And uh, it's, it's a pleasure to come here. I've done a lot of these resorts, RV park, whatever you call it, all around Florida, and I gotta say. Without a, without a doubt, uh, this one here is my favorite. Uh, Traveler's Rest. Yes, that's my favorite one. As uh, John mentioned, I, I, I do a little bit of a, a, a comedy man. I do a little bit of everything, folks, whatever, whatever you desire. But, uh, but uh, how about the, all the entertainment so far? Wasn't it great? Round of applause for everybody you've seen so far. Unbelievable. How about, did you see the first act with those two really sexy women on stage? I lucked out this group because John gives us all dressing rooms back there. And their dressing room, the girls' dressing room, right next to mine. And there's a hole in the wall. And I say, if they want to look, let them look. <laughs> but it's good to be here. Like I said, a uh, little bad news. I, I just broke up with my girlfriend. Yeah, for re religious reasons, I being Catholic, and she was the devil. But uh, she thought I was nosy, apparently. That's what I was reading in her diary. But uh, it's okay now because now I'm dating a homeless girl. It's pretty cool. At the end of the night, drop her off anywhere. <laughs> okay, you're coming around. Better than last night's show, we had a whole room of Jehovah Witnesses. All they wanted to hear were knock-knock jokes. <laughs> they knock on doors for a living, people. Work with me. Spell it out. Put another log on the air conditioner, would you, John? Kind of, you a little warm in here, folks? Yeah. Well, that's okay. We got only four hours to go. Anyway, uh, we travel a lot as entertainers, as you know, and uh, I had a miserable flight. You like to fly? Nobody likes to fly, do they? I flew the other day. It was a nice flight, except for one thing. The woman sitting next to me, the entire flight, breastfeeding a baby. I'm not kidding you. I'm reading the magazine. The little kid's going to town. And you don't want to look. But then again, you don't see it that often. And the flight attendant comes up to me and says, Sir, can I get you something to drink? <laughs> yeah, I was the same as a kid. <laughs> Make mine a double. But anyway, flying is great. Uh, I met a family. I love traveling because I love meeting people from all over. Met a family the other day all the way from Dubai. Have you ever heard of Dubai? Met a family from Dubai. I was fascinated by that. Had to walk right up to them. I had to talk to them. I said, how do you like America? They said, we love America. Anything you don't like about America? They said, well, one thing. I said, what's that? They go, we don't like the Flintstones. You don't like the Flintstones. So figure this out, folks. The people from Dubai do not like the Flintstones, but the people from Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> don't be booing. You'll be telling these to your neighbors next week. But on the plane, I read a very interesting book. Title of the book was, hold on. Hello. I can't, no, I'm doing a show now. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Apparently my car warranty's expired. You get that phone call a lot, don't you folks? I don't even own a car, but anyway. So like I said, I read a very interesting book. The title of the book was called Origins of Last Names. Now, I know that sounds stupid, but under the title in small print, it said if you read the entire book cover to cover, you can tell anything about anybody just by asking them their last names. Let's see if it works. Sir, what is your last name? Murphy. Murphy means attractive and good looking. What's your first name? Bill. Bill, that means not very. Sorry, Bill, it doesn't. Doesn't always work. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm joking. I didn't read a book. But anyway, 
I did read a very interesting magazine article. The article said one out of every five people you meet today are Chinese. I find that hard to believe. I come from a family of five. <laughs> my mom's not Chinese. My dad's not Chinese. I'm certainly not Chinese. Got to be one of my brothers. Bob or Lang Lee. I'm not quite sure. John mentioned also do a lot of jokes. I love telling jokes. I'm a bit of a collector of jokes, actually. My, my whole fam family collected things. My brother collected comic books. My dad collected empty bottles. <laughs> well, that's better than calling him an alcoholic. <laughs> uh, and I collect... Oh, how you doing there, John? I didn't see you there. Why should be out booking us? All right, anyway, tell you a few jokes. We'll start out with an easy one, so we'll get a little bit, little bit up to scale until you start throwing things, and then we'll back it back down. First one, very cute joke. Mother, picture the scene. Mother mouse walking across the kitchen floor. Behind her, five baby mice. A big cat jumps out and goes, Rawr! Mother mouse looks at the cat and goes, Woof, woof, woof. Cat runs away. She turns to her baby mice and goes, See how important it is to learn a second language? <laughs> that joke kills in Miami. <laughs> anyway. Husband and wife sitting at the table enjoying a glass of wine. The wife is enjoying a glass of wine. Husband's looking at his phone. Out of the blue, the wife goes, I love you. I love you more than life itself. I don't think I could live a day without you. Husband puts the phone down and says, is that you talking or the wine? She says, it's me, and I'm talking to the wine. There's an elder, uh, 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 elderly gentleman goes to the doctor and he, he talks to his uh, doctor and says, Doctor, my wife has a hearing problem. And I don't know how to break it to her. She won't come in. Is there anything you could suggest? Give her a little test. Very easy. Stand 10 feet behind her when she's not looking. Ask her a question. If she doesn't answer, get five feet behind her. Ask her the same question. If she doesn't answer, right behind her, ask her the same question. Says, Thank you. He goes home. The wife's bent over the stove cooking. He gets 10 feet behind her. Honey, what's for dinner? Nothing. He gets five feet behind her. Honey, what's for dinner? Nothing. He gets right behind her. Honey, what's for dinner? She turns around and says, for the third time, chicken. <laughs> See, the husband couldn't hear if that's you folks aren't grabbing these. I, I, I don't mind laying them out for you. Elderly woman living in, in an assisted living uh, uh, environment, uh, community, and she notices a gentleman looking, gazing, and sitting in a chair and looking out the window. So she goes up to him and goes, hi. He goes, hello. She goes, want to play a game? He goes, okay. She goes, how about if I guess how old you are? Okay. So she takes her hand, slips it down the front of his trousers, and she feels around for about 20 minutes. She pulls it out and says, you're 97. The guy goes, that's incredible. How'd you know that? She said, you told me yesterday. <laughs> All right, we can step it up a notch. All right, that's good. Three sisters living on anybody here from Oklahoma? Perfect. Three sisters living on a farm in Oklahoma. They're all upstairs getting ready to go out on a big date, individual dates. They're putting their makeup on. There's a knock at the door. Their father, being a farmer, he opens the door. There's a man standing there and goes, hi, my name's Joe. We're gonna, I'm here for Flo. We're going to go to show. She ready to go? Says, I'll get her. Hey, Flo. And out the door they go. Half hour goes by. Farmer opens the door. There's another man standing there. Goes, hi, I'm Eddie. I'm here for Betty. We're going for spaghetti. She ready? Hold on, I'll get her. Betty, out they go. Ten minutes go by. Farmer opens the door. The guy goes, hi, my name's Chuck. And the farmer shot him. <laughs> Two cannibals are walking through the jungle. Two cannibals walking through the jungle. They stumble upon a dead man's body. The one cannibal says, what should we do, call the police? He goes, no, we're cannibals. Let's eat it. He says, really? He goes, yeah. I'll start at his head, you start at the feet, we'll meet in the middle. So they start eating the man's body. 
the guy at the head says, how you doing down there? The guy at the bottom goes, I'm having a ball. He goes, you're eating too fast. Now, there's a gentleman has a, a bit of a, a speech impediment. Now, I'm not by any means making fun of people with speech impediments, folks. It's just for the jokes. So just deal with it. All right. So he's got a speech impediment. He has a hard time finding a job. He sees an ad in the paper. They're looking for some a salesman. He runs down there. The guy comes out. Are you here for the salesman job? The guy said, absolutely. He says, okay, well, here we go door to door and we sell Bibles. You think you could handle it? He said, v -v 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 very, very much so. So he goes out. He comes back two hours later. The boss goes, how many did you sell? He goes, I sold a, I sold a hundred Bibles. The boss goes, you sold a hundred Bibles door to door? What's your secret? He said, we were relatively e e easy. Ring the bell. Lady would come out. I'd say, hi, hi, hi. I'm selling b -b 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 Bibles. Would you like to b -b buy one or do you want me to read it to you? The Pope, the Pope lands in New York City. He's got a big speaking engagement. All right, and as he goes down to get his luggage, his limo driver is anxiously waiting. He says, your eminence, you got here early. We got a half hour, maybe an hour to kill. Where do you want me to take you? I'll take you anywhere you want. Pope goes, young man, everywhere I go, people drive me. Just once, I'd like to drive myself, if you don't mind. Not a problem. The young man gets in the back. Pope gets behind the wheel. Through the streets of New York, they go. Right through a red light. Cop pulls him over, raps on the window. Pope rolls down the window. The cop takes one look, says, wait here. Goes to his squad car, picks up the phone, says, Sergeant, I pulled over a dignitary. I don't know what to do. Sergeant goes, how high up is he? He goes, pretty high. He says, well, is it the mayor? No, bigger. Did you pull over the governor? No, bigger. He said, don't tell me to pull the president of the United States over. He goes, I don't know who I pulled over, but the Pope's his chauffeur. All right, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Save it for the end. I got a week finish. All right. Dude, that was a little joke. She's a little bit. Now a little mind reading. We're going to close out the show with the mind because we got a great show going so so. Boys and girls. Moms and dads. People from Canada. <laughs> Any Canadians here? Yeah. yeah they're, they're always here. <laughs> What I have here is a large tiger stripe cloth bag. And in this bag, lady, I don't mean bag lady, in this bag lady, is a picture of a famous person. I am the only one who knows the name of the famous person, but through the powers of telekine tele that psychic stuff, I will attempt to telepathically, communicatically, transputically transport the person's names from my head to can we have some house lights a little bit of house light by any chance it's an easy to house lights perfect i'm going to transport the famous person that's good i'm going to transport the famous person's head from my head to that gentleman with the purple shirt there now david have I ever met you before he is sir with the blue shirt over here What is your name, sir? What's your name? John. John. Oh, they got a room named after you. All right. Stand up, John. Hurry up, John. I ain't got all night. All right. Yes or no, John? Just yes or no. Do you have any idea of the name of the famous person in the photo? Yes or no? Good, John. Now, John, we haven't spoke prior to this or set any of this up before the show, have we? Okay, because you sound different on the phone, John, is why I'm asking. <laughs> I gotta make sure I got the right guy, <laughs> not some Canadian. <laughs> All right, John, concentrate. Make your mind a complete blank. Thank you. I'm gonna out transport the name, starting in my upper barrel cellum coronium, go around my bionic optic nervous central system, drop straight down my fallopian tubes, <laughs> follow my spine into my semicolon. And out the bottom with Szechuan chicken and Rice Krispie treats. Ready, John? Here we go. Don't say anything, John, until I point you. Here we go. First, I got to transport the name from my head to your head. Ah! Ah! Elvis! All right? 
I think I passed it. John, when I point to you, yell out the name of a famous person that might have popped into your Elvis, into your empty head. Are you ready, John? No. Thank you, John. They're not buying it. John, any other famous person that might have, celebrity that might have popped in your head, John? Nice and loud, yell out the name of a celebrity. Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise? <laughs> Sit down, John. <laughs> All right, hold on, you laughing hyenas. If I pull a photograph of Tom Cruise out of here, would you be amazed? Yeah, so would I. If I pull a photograph of Tom Cruise out here, would you applaud a little bit? Would you give me money after the show? No. Tom Cruise, who looks a lot like Elvis, actually. Tom Cruise, six months old. There he is. Tom Cruise. <laughs> Tried to screw me up with that one, didn't you? He would have, he said, Denzel Washington. <laughs> Denzel Washington, six months old. You guys are doing great. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you and good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, Rich Papora. Come on, let's hear it.